In this video I'll introduce some key concepts of queuing theory relating them to healthcare systems. Healthcare systems that we encounter are typically full of queues. This could be physical queues such as waiting to see a doctor or even virtual queues such as having your name added to a waiting list for surgery. This diagram shows an example of an outpatient clinic where people arrive, join a queue for the receptionist, then wait to see a nurse for diagnostics, and then go back to the waiting room to queue to see the consultant. We can model such a system, for example, to look at staff levels versus patient waiting times and help move patients through the system more effectively, trying to meet waiting time targets whilst ensuring our staff are effectively rostered. Let's zoom into one of these queues. Here we have three servers, namely consultants, and currently five patients waiting in the queue, thus in total eight patients in this service channel. This is one type of standard queue, but more generally we can adopt Kendall's notation to represent different types of queues, whereby A here represents the way the inter-arrival times are distributed. So the letter D, for example, would mean deterministic and that the time between successive arrivals into the system was known and fixed, for example, precisely every 10 minutes. This would be a uh, system without variability. But more commonly in healthcare systems, arrivals follow a Markovian process with exponentially distributed inter-arrival times. Then we have B, which is just like A, but describes the service time. So for how, how long, for example, would a consultant spend with the patient? Then C is the number of servers. Here we have three in the example. And K is the buffer size, which is the number of patients allowed in the system. That is the sum of the servers plus the number of patients that may queue. In some cases, this may be infinite if any number of patients are allowed to join the queue, or it could be a fixed value if there's a physical constraint, for example, on the queue size, or it is capped and people are not allowed to join the queue if this buffer size is exceeded. In fact, there are several more letters in Kendall's notation, but the first four are usually sufficient to capture most commonly observed cues. Looking now at continuous time Markov chains to represent our queuing system, we start with the most basic queue, an MM1. That is, Markovian arrival and service processes with one server. We have no value of k. The buffer size is assumed, therefore, to be infinite. Then we have a transition diagram to represent the possible changes of state. The states show the number of people in the system. So that's no people in the system, one person, two people, and so on. To have one more person in the system, we have to have a arrival. And that happens, in general, with rate lambda. And to have one less person in the system, we need someone to depart and be served by the single server. And this happens at rate mu, in general. Consequently, we can write down the transition rate matrix, Q, as shown here. We can then go on to solve the Markov chain to get the probability pi i of having i patients in the system. We can also make use of Little's queuing formula, which says that in steady state, the average number of patients in the system L is equal to the average arrival rate multiplied by the average time a patient waits in the system. This indeed holds for any queuing systems in steady state, and although it looks intuitively reasonable, it's actually quite a remarkable result, as the relationship is not influenced by the arrival process distribution, the service distribution, the service order, or in fact practically anything else. Here the indices denote the number in the system, the numbers in the queue, and the numbers being served. So for the MM1 system, we can write down what these would be in terms of lambda and mu. Note here rho is what we call the traffic intensity and is calculated for an MM1 by lambda divided by mu. Very briefly then, we can extend to multi-server queues, here with K servers, such that as soon as K people are in the system, a queue will begin to form. And at most, therefore, the total service rate is k mu, when all k servers are busy. And with a bit more work, we can again go on to calculate the probability of um, i patients in the system, which requires also the probability of the system being empty, pi naught. Again, there is a nice example of some Sage code available to play with on Sage Interact, written by my colleague Vince Knight. This allows you to change the values of lambda, 
mu, c and k and look at the resulting calculations. What is helpful about Q in theory for many healthcare systems is that we can observe the system, estimate the arrival and service time parameters, use appropriate distributions, values of C and K, and therefore immediately calculate a whole host of important system metrics and key performance indicators, such as waiting times and staff utilisation. Then for scenario modelling, we can, for example, experiment if demand increases by affecting in the inter-arrival times or service time change, or if indeed we change the number of servers, servers themselves. In the next video, I will highlight extensions to permit more sophisticated queuing systems and behaviours leading on to computer simulation.